Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Glenwood Football Show once again, week two with Ryan Nelson. I'm ready for tonight. Are you ready for tonight? Because <laughs> oh, I know you've had a good week well, and a good weekend. Well, it, it, you know, it's Monday, but uh, <laughs> a special guest. <laughs> How's it going, Coach? Uh, no, Coach Matt Garner wanted to be in the picture. Uh, all right, hold on. Before you get carried away, because I'm going to get carried away, because I even have stats tonight. Oh, yeah, I I'm see really that. excited. I see that. You got it all. All right. Going. Excited to have Georgia Alabama Sports Live again. They carried the game the other night. Richard's here tonight. Thrift's doing something else. You can follow them on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, this is live on Facebook right now. It'll be on YouTube uploaded later. Uh, also, we're on Glenwood Facebook Live, so um, we're excited about having y'all. I want to thank Mike and Ed's Barbecue again on 13th Street, Phoenix City. Chase and Abby, thank you very much for having our show. We'll be here all week, all all year. Ten games we know of, but we plan on being here for 11, 12, and maybe 13. What do you think? We ain't worried about that. We're about game two right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. All right. I get a little carried away. That's it's right, okay. Sure. Coach Ryan Nelson, glad first, to First you. off, I want to say... I was able to go back and watch the game day preview that y'all did, you and Thiff and Richard and everything. Right. What a wonderful thing y'all are doing for these high school kids. Right. And I want to tell you, Richard, thank you so much, along with Chase and Abby, for having us down here. But that was awesome, man. And get to see DJ out there. I was very excited. And, uh, and get to see you a little bit. So <laughs> we actually, I, I, I was sitting there with my father on Saturday, and uh, we sat there and watched it. And uh, he, I think he's been watching it a couple of times. But, you know, again, just, that, that's awesome, man, for these kids. Way to know. make me look good on my Pick. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. Well, end up going our way. That's right. End up going that's right. Our way. So that, all right. Blessing. One and zero on the year. That's right. Beat the number one team in Georgia right now, uh, Pacelli. Uh, really good football team. Really good program. Very well coached. Um, talk to me a little bit about what you thought about Friday night. You know, I told people this probably all weekend. No, see, it, it's more for me our kids' effort. I think we played hard, and that was my ex expectation, and that was my want to all along is, you know, it may go good, so it may go bad, but our effort controls everything. And that's why I think the biggest step from year one to year two, from a program standpoint, that I wanted to instill in our kids, no matter what it looks like, no matter what's happening, is our effort's got to be 100%. And that's how we train, and that's how you know, everything we do on a day in, day out is, is built off, you know, going around the effort. And, uh, you know, I was so proud of our kids for just playing hard. And uh, that, that's what we did for four quarters. It, it didn't matter when the, even when the, the eight, well, what we call the A2s got in there, those guys came out in the fourth quarter and played hard right. for us. And that's what I want our, our program to be, be built off of, of guys just being 90 and nothing and going hard and, and playing that brand of football. Well, the thing is, once that gets rolling, everybody wants to be a part of that. And, you know, I think you're, what, 68, 69? On dressing out right 60, now? Yeah, we're 69. That's right. awesome. Yeah, 69 players on the you know, even the, from the – First guy to the last guy from Lamont, those guys, right. all the way to the well, last guy that gets a chance to play. Yeah. They want to be known that they were in the game when we were winning. You know 100%. what I'm saying? And that's the expectation because you know I tell you know a lot of people and you know coaching philosophies are different, but you know let me put my glasses our, what on. Our, what our program, you know, we want to play all the guys. I mean, they all going to practice all the time, and uh, they're going to be out there. And today, in the 103 degree right, heat, right. practicing. I mean. So the expectation is for him to, to contribute and play somewhere. I'm important now. I, I have see. the stat line. I see. You got highlights. I do. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Uh, 22 first downs to 11. Yeah. Well, first off, I want to credit our defense. You know, Coach McConnell, Coach Smith, Coach uh, JJ, Coach Coach Jackson, Coach uh, Tyson Armstrong. Man, what an effort. What a job. And, uh, you know, Flipping the script from last year to this year, I think we gave up well over, you know, 250, 260 yards last year on the ground. And uh, they really kind of controlled the ball game last year on the ground. So this year, uh, we really controlled the, the game defensively. Right. And, uh, you know, we, we gave up one little boo-boo there. Right. Uh, which, you know, we'll talk more about that in a minute, <laughs> kind of what happened with the situation. Right. Uh, but it was on fourth down, and we were in position to make a play. We didn't make the play. Um, it happens sometimes in football. And then we gave up one play in the second half, and again on another fourth and probably five. But I just credit Josh and his staff and our defense. And just and that's one thing we really, really preach this offseason is running 
running to the ball. Right. And uh, that's one thing we really did a good job of last last week. Was 265 the on the ground to 172. Yeah. So you know, a lot a lot of that's they run do. the wing team, yep. so they're yep. gonna yep. run the so, football. You know, you know, that's one thing that you know we talked about last week. That that's really I've tried to, you know, I guess not change, but you know, get better in all season is. You know, what, our style of play up front on both sides of the ball because, you know, a lot of scrimmage is going to control ball games. Right. And, uh, that's one thing I felt like going into year two, we had to put our hands on. We had to improve that. And uh, that kind of showed the other night we were able to run the ball and they went. 81 yards passing to 42. Yeah. So, you know. The we, slant worked well. Yeah. Good uh, call, Coach. You know, we, well, it always is when it works. But, you know, if you'd have told me Thursday or really all week that we were going to throw the ball 11 times and, and win like the way we did, I probably told you crazy. But, you know, as a coach, sometimes you got to back up. And uh, we felt like we had a lot of things through the air that was going to be open. And uh, we had some things that was open. And uh, But we didn't have to use it. So, you know, credit to our guys up front. Credit to Carter Judah. Credit to Camden White. Absolutely. Credit to Dallas Crow. I mean, we kept it in their hands. And uh, one thing we really were able to do is get a lead. It didn't really kill the clock. In the third and fourth quarter, we went on a five and a half minute drive and right at a six minute drive, and we really kept our defense off the field. That's the one clock. of the things we're going to talk about uh, 29 minutes of uh, possession to 18. Yeah, and you know, as a head coach, what we do offensively, I don't get caught up in time possession. I don't. And uh, we like to play fast and stuff NASCAR like that. NASCAR with you all the yeah, time. Well, it's not all the time. Right. But if people saw the other night, you know, we, we have the ability when we get a league like that. We can slow it down, control the ball game like we did. We don't have to snap the ball. So that's one thing, you know, when we end up getting a 24-6 lead, I was going to make them push it and get to back to a two-score lead before we kind of went back to, you know, our up-tempo. And I don't want to talk are. negative, but you have to you have to talk about stuff like this, and I won't talk about the other side. Seven penalties for 50 yards. What what was the main the penalties? Uh, you know, we had a couple pre-snap penalties on freeze, and we'll talk more about that in a minute, uh, which can't, it, it should never happen. Right. Uh, we had two on that, and then, you know, we have a blindside block with a quarterback. We all, I saw that yeah, play, and, and he, uh, he called it yeah, immediately. Yeah, and, you know, so it happens. It's kind of a, a, a freak play. Then we have a, a face mask blocking on the perimeter. So that's, you know, four, five of our, our seven penalties. I think we had another offside, so on, on, on an extra point. So that's just a lot of stuff. And then, you know, for them, you know, I think they end up having around 14, 15 penalties. But, you know, I think they I jump, didn't want to talk about it. It's well, 15. Yeah, but, you know, they jump offsides eight times. Woo, and I didn't think, they, though? I think they had three personal fouls on one extra point. So there's kind of, you know, I guess 11 or 15 penalties right there. So For 150. But, 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 I'll, but, I'll, but I'll say this, you know, in, in games, where you play start the season game one game twos penalties are going to happen right you know that's just part of especially football. early yeah and, and, and when you're playing good teams the speed of the game you try to you know get it in practice and, and go against your ones and get the speed but you really ain't gonna get game speed you got there play. all right we're gonna go over the three areas of the game you tell me who showed up who showed out on defense uh, defensively, I think it all starts with number four. I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think if you ran the game, good I mean, answer. Yeah. Uh, you know, how played, many total tackles? You know, with have? fifteen tackles. Um, I think he had. I think uh, right at I think seven or eight solos, and right at seven or eight assists. He had three tackles for loss. I had a pass deflection. So just. You know, great night for him, but I mean, this is credit for how hard he worked and who he is. Right. And uh, he's a great kid, um, you know, and he holds himself to a high standard, and uh, he really works his tail off. So, but other guys like Wes Graham controlled it. Samaje, who's going to be up here in a minute, they controlled the line of scrimmage. And, you know, what about Jackson Greaves getting a big pick? I right was there, fixing to say half, something so, about Jackson you know, Greaves so, coming back to yep, play football. Coming back out there as a baseball guy. And he caught that ball, play. ran, got down. Yep. Most exciting <laughs> yep. joker on the field so, and, coming you know, off the field. The thing about a guy like Jackson Griggs is Friday when you talk to him for the game, he's got a lot of anxiety. because, And it's not fear because the kid's fearless. He just doesn't want to mess it, up. Well, it's the unknown because he ain't been out there playing football. Right. And he don't really – he's a baseball guy. He's been in big-time games. Speed of the game. Yeah, so he's kind of uncertain. But, you know, for him, it's going to slow down a little bit game two and, and, and throughout the season. But, you know, he played really well. You know, I thought Tripp Gillen played good for us. You know, our other inside linebackers. So, you know, Denny, Den Den just to name a few more. So, again, credit to our staff uh, defensively and credit to our defense. I mean, like I said, I think we gave up two plays all night um, and two big plays. So, we, we do got to find a ways to not give up the big plays. But just so extremely happy for them. Because when we get stops and we get our offense back to the ball, I feel like we got a chance to be successful. All right. S slicing it up a little bit in the middle. 
but he only got one punt. Will Wilbride only got a punt yeah. one time, and that's good for you. Yeah. But talk about your special team. Yeah. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about Montroy. Uh, you know, Montroy, I think you know had solid. Three, yeah, had three three touchbacks, and that, that that's what I'm preaching every single day. We worked on kickoff today every single day to him. He's got the leg to get the ball in the end zone, and people don't understand the high school football. When you take the ball down and score, and you kick off, and the ball goes to the end zone, they got to go 80 on your defense. It is a huge factor. And I know from the flip side, when they score on us, they kick it in the end zone, and we, I got to call plays to go 80. Right. It's tough. Right. So, you know, I, I cannot be more happy with him. And I told him today, be 100%. I, I'll feed you on Sunday, I promise you. Because <laughs> it's a huge weapon for us. Right. And then, you know, he also made, you know, right a 30 yard field goal right for the half. That was Big awesome. kick. Yeah, yeah, put us up 17 6. So, and a great drive right there by offense, but and then Will had the one punt right there in the end. So I love. Will. And we had a chance to get a recovery. Yeah, on we that. did. Almost falling it. So I love Will to death, and I hope he punts a lot. But I really don't hope he punts a lot. <laughs> so but that's it part was a of pretty punt. Yeah, man, that's part of being you know a punter and all that kind of stuff. So you know he probably should have had another time to punt in the first half. Right. And I want to make this clear to everybody. Right. We were not going for it on our backside 25. I've got you. Uh, they jumped off sides on what we call our freeze play about eight times. And uh, we were trying to freeze them again on fourth and three. Right. And uh, almost what we call a double freeze. And uh, Will just kind of got caught up, read the wrong. It was just something unfortunate that happened. We can grow from it. Right. Uh, but, you know, I'll take the blame from as the head coach. I ain't going to blame it on Will or anything like that. It happens. Uh, but just to make the, everybody right. in the stands well, clear, well, we, the we were not going for it. Well, what probably made it look worse was they go for it on fourth down, throw it up, Hail Mary, yeah. and score a touchdown. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's part of and it. And we had it surrounded. We just did not yeah. ball down. Yeah, we just got to make a play on that. Right. So, but, you know, obviously we're fixing to punt the ball there. I was running the clock down, fixing to call a timeout, punting away, let our guys play defense and stuff You thought like those that. coaches up in the stands were questioning you? Well, you know, not that – I don't think that, but I'm sure <laughs> if I was watching the game, I would probably say the same thing. Right. What was going on? Right. What's the call? Right. All that kind of stuff. But that's football. And I again, think they could tell when uh, Will came off the field <laughs> what the deal was. Well, you it's know, okay. and he made a mistake. He's a smart and, kid. And, and, he's player. a senior, and he's a very, very great player for us. He's going to be on here tonight. That's right. I'm excited And he's a very it. intelligent kid, too. We all make mistakes. He learned from it. I promise you it won't happen again with him, and right. we'll move on. Right. Yep. All right. Offense. I know who you can talk about. Who showed yeah, well, up and well, showed well, out. Well, first and foremost, I want to tell you know give a special thanks to our offensive staff. You know, offense coordinator Earl Alexander done a phenomenal job of getting these guys and scheming it up. And Jesse Boyd and Tyson. I mean, not Tyson, but Jason Armstrong and Blair Armstrong. Just a phenomenal job. You know, being up scouting these guys all summer and looking at them and having a great game plan going into it. Uh, obviously, it's going to start right there at quarterback. Um, and we felt like going in, this is a state championship type game. You know, obviously, you play number one versus number one. Right. So we knew we were going to run him a little more than we usually do and by, by design. Right. And, uh, you know, he ended up having, I think, right at 24, 25 carries. Now, some of those carries were all scrambles and stuff like that. But we wanted to go into the game with about with him getting about 15 design runs. Right. And that's about what it was. And right. I cannot say enough about Carter Judah. Now, Woo, sophomore. Sophomore. Yeah, sophomore. Uh, coming in, and, uh, and we've talked about him all summer, and we talked about him on the show uh, last week. A kid that really has got his body right, right, really has came in and done a phenomenal job, and just went to work. And that two one hundred yard rushers, yep, yep, one twenty six yep. and one hundred and two. Yep. So can't say enough about him, and uh, you know, also and Mason out wide. You know, you know, they, they kind of end up stacking the box, and we had some things. Like I said, we had a lot more things on the perimeter. We didn't have to use them. Uh, but Mason had two big catches down there for touchdowns. 29 yards yep. catch. Camden White had a good night for us. You know, I think he's only going to get better back there for us. Right. His, his first time kind of playing running back. So, I, I, there in the third quarter, he started getting a little feel for it. So, he's just a guy that's going to have to get a feel for it. But I think you'll see every week he get better. But it's like I told you. It's a one-two punch, kind of like JT and, and Aaron was last right. year. Now they're different as far as age and stuff like that. But it's very similar because you got a power back in, in Carter, and you got kind of more of a shifty back in Camden. And we can do so many things with Camden. So I'm excited. And you know, another kid that played good for us, Braden Good, and uh, he got Be there. Good. Be good. He had you know three or four catches for us. Had some good runs. So and you got other guys like. You no, know, he's not the biggest guy in the world. No. He's not scared of contact. No, he, he, he you know he catches that quick out. He gets up the field. No. He's not trying to get out of bounds. No, no. He's trying to get extra yards. And, and, and that's what we we coach all the time. So. 
And then we got guys like Griff and, uh, you know, River Baker and, and Kyle Lawrence and Eli Bankson who, you know, didn't really get their looks and touches. Right. But sometimes in football, you know, you can't control that because, you know, I'm a very bad coach if we sit there and throw it 35 times and get beat by 14 right. when all we got to do is just hand the ball off right. and run the football and, you know, they had trouble stopping thought us. thought the option was a really yeah, good yeah, part yeah, of your game. Well, that's, that, that, that's our, you know, what we base our stuff off. I mean, regardless, you know, we're a triple to a double read option, RPO type, you know, offense. We right. play with a lot of pace, but I mean, that's our bread and butter, and we're gonna run the inside outside zone, and along with other things, but the other night, you know, we ran the inside zone a lot. Dallas did a really good job of reading it, pulling it when he had to, and uh, and just moving the chains. And uh, so, I, you know, I can't be more happy with our offense. I think, like you said, we punted one time. Uh, we moved the ball. The first drive for me was the biggest because we had some mishaps early. You know, we get but a penalty. Carter had some yep. plays yeah, on some that plays. first he, drive. You know, he caught a couple slants on the backside. We knew we were going to get heavy pressure when we went in it, well, what I call our empty set. So we had some, some what I call some side adjustments built in right there to throw to him right there, which, you know, he's done a really good job this summer catching the ball. He's got good hands, a baseball player, good eye head coordination. So uh, we hit him on a few slants early right. to get us out of some bad situations. And then, uh, you know, one thing we kind of put in this, this summer and this year is our jumbo package. And you're going to see that a lot with us. I mean, because I'm a firm believer we're going to put our best lineman, you know, down there. We've got Samaj and Lamont coming down. And here it is, stop it. When I saw seven and four <laughs> right behind them yeah, two so big jumpers, I said, it, yeah. uh oh. It's something, you know, we used to do a lot at Central. And uh, we had some other guys like Trey Samuel and Jonathan Wallace. But we always had them two linebackers in there and a big old lineman and tight ends. and. You know, kind of same similar situation where you got guys that can run and things like that. So, you know, line up and see what they can do with it and right. make people stop it. Well, Coach, we're fixing to bring on three of your best right here. Number one, Griff Garner. Number seven, Samaj Williams. And number 57, Will Johnson. Yep. We'll get a chance to talk to them for a minute. So, y'all hold on to us right there. We're going to get these guys up here and we'll get a chance to yep. talk to them. Looking forward to it. Willie. Samaj. Griff. What'd you eat, baby? What'd you eat? I had a um, jumbo chip pork sandwich. A jumbo chip. And some fries. Just pass this to them when it's their turn. That's exactly what I'm going to eat. Good. Jumbo chip, curly fries and stew. Don't get nervous, Willie. All right. We're going to have to stop. Right. 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 We've already, hey, we've already decided. We, we're going to leave it alone. Oh, it's already over with. Oh, look at here. All right, y'all slide to me. I'm I'm down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on, come on, come on. Can you get him in there, Richard? All right, make now, sure y'all speak into those microphones. Here's the mic to be speaking. Yep. This is y'all statement, so I ain't gonna talk about it. <laughs> so we'll ask y'all questions. Y'all struggle a little bit. I need to chime in. I will. But this is for y'all. So whatever you ask y'all, y'all just say what's on your heart and all that good stuff and do a good job. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Boss lady called. Big Daddy said louder. Louder, please. <laughs> we he said he can't hear us, Coach. You ready? All right, we've been joined by number 57, Will Johnson. Number one, Griff Garner. Number seven down there, Samaj J. Williams. He looks really thrilled to be here. <laughs> 57 uh, had a big night the other night as the center on our starting our line. Um, talking to us a little bit about in the trenches the other night. What you thought about how you thought your your offense, you and your offensive line played? I thought we did pretty good. Um, we had a lot of forward push the other night. We were pretty dominant up front. Um, I think if we get that going Friday night, we'll be pretty set for you know dominating the trenches. I talked to a uh, coach from another school today and he watched the game and he said that our offensive line looks totally different than it did last year size wise and just really watching y'all zone block yeah. he spoke he spoke really well of how well y'all blocked in the zone the other night yeah i think we um going into last year we really didn't under not that we didn't understand we didn't really mesh well at the end of the year coming on double teams and getting off double teams and going to the linebackers but um this year, I really feel like we under, have a good understanding of that, and we can get forward push and get to that linebacker and really block them off. Um, yeah, we do have 
it does look different. We hit the weight room a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. It was off season. Some um, big boys. Yeah, we also got uh, Carter Ross up there and Charlie Turner. Yep. And Good addition. Was right. Right there. So I feel like we've grown a lot over the past year. And staying healthy helps a lot too. Oh yeah. The, uh, y'all look really good the other night. Will um, and I don't. We're not going to talk anything negative, okay? You go hear the word freeze a lot, or it you happens. go hear that yeah. a lot. Yeah. You go, but you're going to hear that a lot this year, right? Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's in y'all's, that's in y'all's playbook. I mean, yes. that's a part, and it starts with you, evidently. And yeah, hey, you, uh, uh, we won. You know, again, we won, and you'll get better from that. Cause you ain't got to worry about it. Absolutely. Experience. First game. Um, it happens. It happens. Yeah. That's right. I thought Coach had a lot of trust in us going forward on fourth and one on the third. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I like to hear I, that. I was down for it. I thought we had it. Um, yeah, but it's a good learning experience. Absolutely. Well, yeah. pass it on down to Griff. Let's talk to Griff for a minute. Number one, wide out, Griff Garner. How you doing tonight? Right. Glad to have you. Glad to be here with my basketball coach. <laughs> That's right. You're here with both of them. A lot of running. Anyway, talk about the other night, uh, what it meant for you, your first last game as a senior, yeah. uh, winning against Michelli. Talk a little bit about it from your perspective. I think for me, the, the strength of like my game personally has always been route running, but I think for me individually and for our receiving core, like Coach Alexander will tell you this, I think the biggest thing that I noticed was we took it to a different level physically. Like We blocked on the perimeter like I, I've never seen our group block like that before. But I think we just had a different mentality going in, like, hey, we want, like, we, we told our guys before, um, make plays for the guy next to you, because if you make them for yourself, you'll never have enough motivation for it. So look to the guy next to you and say, hey, I'm blocking so this guy can go score a touchdown, right? I think that was our mentality going in, like, hey, because nobody thought we were going to win the game. So I think we going, did. Right. right that's, <laughs> I mean, I think that's what brought us together was because, like, hey, we said, like, hey, when we walk out of these doors, it's just us out there, right? Like, nobody else has our backs. So it's just us and the guys next to us. And I think that's why we were so physical and we were so ready to play coming out of the gate. We, we came out of the, the locker room in the first quarter and out of halftime better than I've ever seen us do that before. Talk a little bit, you know, you can do some shout-outs right here. Talk a little bit about your your core, your guys, the wide outs and the slots. Uh, um, pretty good group? Pretty yeah. athletic group? I think – I think Mason McCrane is the best wide receiver in the state. Oh, no, I love it. I hope he's not watching. He's, I'm just kidding. I mean, he had a, he had a pretty tough matchup going to the game. We, he knew it, and I think um, he was ready. Uh, you don't get 6'6 six, six too often. <laughs> so, I mean, that makes Coach Nelson's job easier. And right. it, it just gives us a little something extra right. But I was proud Cam White. He came out there. He had that was his first varsity start at receiver. Yeah. And he came out there like he'd done a million times. I mean, he's a gamer. Griff, I know you. You're, I mean, you're one of the most honest people I know, uh, and you tell it like it is. Talk about be good. What about oh, be good? Man, I was proud of that guy. Because, uh, he's new. You know, he's different. He's from a different area. He's fitting in. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm I'm glad that he came and he really he showed what he could do Friday night. I mean, he caught one of the screens. He put one of the best moves on, on the guy I've seen. The I time. agree. I mean, it was. It was wild, but I think it was cool to see him do well and then everybody be excited for him and stuff. I think he didn't get that a lot where he was coming from. Right, gotcha. And him coming here and be able to get loved on, not only by the coaches and the people around him, but his teammates at the same time, I think that's that's the biggest thing for him. You're one of those senior leaders, Griff. Y'all have a good thing going right now. I know it's only the first game, but you can sort of feel it in the school. You can see it when y'all walk around with each other. You can see when y'all go to practice. You know, and don't get me wrong, football's hot. People get the attitudes. People get upset. Y'all got something to really start standing on after this week of that first game. We're trying to push it into this next week. So, Griff, thanks for your leadership. Appreciate what you do out there. Pass those two microphones on down to the to the quiet guy down there at the other end. Samaj Williams, number seven. How you doing? Coach? How are you doing, buddy? I'm good, I'm good. I got to call your name a few times the other night. I know you look up there. Yeah, that was me, Coach. That was me. Uh, talk a little bit about from your perspective Friday night, how you thought you did and how you thought your defensive guys did. We'll talk about your job on offense in just a minute. But talk a little bit about your job on defense. Um, I'm, I was really proud of the D-line. The, uh, we didn't really, I ain't going to say we couldn't get a good look this week, but it was really hard like for all offense to like learn like a wing tee and then we like for the D-line to so like run like a 
we, we could get like a good simulation. So it's hard to like know what you're going into if you don't if you haven't really practiced against a wing tee a lot. But they did amazing. Like honestly, they did amazing. Like I, I didn't think like. Max Ross, he did amazing. He That's really awesome. Did. That's West, awesome to hear. Wesley Graham did amazing. They all did. I didn't expect that. Moving Two forklifts in front of you yeah, right there. They, they really they made they made the, the defense that night. The reason we, we, we didn't get up like that many points, it was because of them, honestly. So gotta bring it like that every week, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm I'll be glad to see number seven play again this week. Talk a little bit about coach talked to earlier a little bit about it. What's it like playing with number four? He, uh, I love no He brings it, doesn't yeah, he? he does. He, he brought does. it. He was very exciting to watch. Y'all yeah. all were, but he just had another motor the other yeah, night. He, <laughs> he was very excited he, about playing. He hit me play. in the back a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Talk a little bit about your offensive plays where you brought in on the jumbo package. Oh, yeah, we love that. We love, <laughs> yeah, me and Mike love jumbo. We love it. I see four and seven line up behind yeah. the tackle and the tight end. I said, uh-oh, it's not going the other yeah. way. It's coming <laughs> this way. Yeah. So, you get some notoriety on the offensive side, too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Really proud of you three guys. Y'all have uh, y'all have started this off right. I know Coach Nelson's proud of the work y'all put in. And uh, got the Cougars, Max Strong Field this week. Anybody got anything to say? I mean, we're on TV Friday night. Any of y'all that are watching your Friday night shows on WTVM, you can forget it. We're playing football Friday <laughs> night. The state line showdown. What do you think about going across the river playing at Brookstone? Any of you, it doesn't matter. Uh, I think for me, I, I love being able to play. Because before Coach Nelson got here, we didn't get to do stuff like that. We played all the schools in Alabama. Right. And obviously, like, from just going to church and being around this area for so long, I know guys on their team, you know, guys up in Kelly Sue. So I think it makes it a little more fun when you get to play against your friends, you know, people that you know you have a relationship with. Well, the thing for y'all is this is the first time. WTVM's carrying this. Y'all are the inaugural game. They're going to try to do it every year. The state line showdown. They're going to try to have, a, of course, an Alabama school and a Georgia school. But y'all and Brookstone are the first ones to do it. And uh, I wasn't kidding. It's prime time television, uh, like game day. I mean, they may even put a microphone in Coach's mouth right after the first quarter. Now, I don't know if he needs a hot mic after the first quarter. You know what I'm saying? Especially if we go free. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know if that, I need to be beside coach and sort of, beep, you know what I'm saying? But it's exciting. I think, I mean, yes, it's, it's a little bit more pressure. You know, probably just playing on a regular Friday night, but I think we have a really, really mature group of guys, and I think if any team can go do it, come out with a win, I think it's all right. Well, hey, good luck to all three of you this week. Looking forward to hearing some good things this Friday night. Uh, I know your families are here tonight representing y'all, and uh, y'all have done a great job rep representing our football team and our school. So good luck Friday night, guys. We'll be right back right after this. We'll have some more guys coming in. Well, we don't have any more guys coming in. I got Coach Nelson coming in. We're going to talk about Brookstone and a couple other things, and then we're going to get out of here. All right, guys, good job. Great job. Great job. Awesome. Yeah, that was, that might have been the best. That was good stuff. That was really good. No, he was, he was on camera today. Oh, did you have him for? Uh, yeah, Tony got him today. Did you have him for that? Yeah. Tony Reese. ABC, like Saturday night kickoff. <laughs> You're right. No, it really is. All right, Coach, you ready? I'm ready to roll, man. All right, let's go. Coach, Brookstone. The Cougars. You lost by one or two last two. year. Two, 25-23. Great, great football oh, what game. A, what a game last year, really. Uh, what a phenomenal catch by one of their guys who's no oh, longer yeah. there in that game oh, yeah. last year. You don't have to worry about him this year. Thank God. He's at the University of Georgia. Yeah, thank God. All right, Brookstone, 745 on ABC, which I was just told, yeah. which is WTV. That's correct. You know, uh, we're local boys. Uh, talk a little bit about Brookstone, what you've seen so far. Well, the first thing that pops out when you see them is a running back. I mean, he's shifty. He's a, he's a lot like the guy they had last year from a statue standpoint, a little small guy. Flowers. Very, Flowers. Yeah, Flowers. but this, this guy's very quick. 
uh, very explosive. Um, so, you know, you see that when you put the film on. Obviously, their center's really good, uh, 75. Um, they're breaking a new quarterback. Uh, they got some very talented receivers, number three, number four, number 81. So they got some really good skill guys on the perimeter. Um, you know, and again, they're breaking a new quarterback. So defensively, they got the inside linebacker back, number 50, uh, who was played really well against us last year. And also number eight, um, you know, he's the tight end slash, you know, outside linebacker. Uh, Vickerson. And, yeah, and I don't know all these names. Chris but Vickerson. I, you know, yeah. I, and I apologize. You I know, know numbers. Guy, yeah. yeah, I know numbers. <laughs> So, but you know, they got a lot coming back. Number three's name is Reggie Tolbert. Yep. So he and he's a and he can fly. He's a dyna- yeah, he's a yeah. dynamic player too. Um, so, but we got some good players coming back. You know, I expect them to, to, to give us their best shot and uh, to play a very good game. Obviously, this is their home game starting out. First game at home. It is. For them. That's right. They played a uh, scrimmage, right? Yeah, right. They played a scrimmage. So, uh, but you know, does he, uh, you know, just like last, I'm worried about us. I'm worried about doing what. I'm worried about can we prepare. Monday through Thursday. Can we do the right things during the week and hydrate? Can we do all the little things that we got to do to be successful on Friday night? And that's the challenge that, that we talk about from last year that I think <coughs> that we started doing after week five and we, we started to become a, a really good football team last year is our guys really bought into what we're trying to do, our system, our process, everything when it starts on Sunday at 3 o'clock and all the way up till kickoff at 7.53. Our weeks are structured. Every single day, there's a plan going in, what we're trying to accomplish to get ready for Friday night at 8 o'clock. Right. So I just hope our guys can really lock in and, uh, you know, do what, we, what we're supposed to do during the week and then, you know, come out Friday night and be successful. All right. We'll get to Brookstone over there in just a minute. I meant to say this earlier. Do you know how many people was at the game Friday night? A lot. And uh, that, Do you know what the parking lot looked like? I don't, but I've been told. There was lines, two lines down Somerville Road in front of our school on both sides. Right. Unbelievable well, crowd. Well, first and foremost, I want to say this. Obviously, the crowd was huge and all that. But what about the upgrades we have had from a football standpoint on campus? And I can't give Jim Davidson enough credit and Tim Fannin enough credit. And, you know, some, some other people have been involved too. But our, you know, in one year, our facilities have changed so much. And I'm very, very proud to be the head coach at Glenwood High School. Right. And, and, and what we got over there. I mean, just. Stadium looked good. Yeah, and it's been little by little. I mean, you know, we did the field last year. We got the bleachers. We got the scoreboard. And everything's starting to come into place. But, you know, we're giving these kids something to be proud right. about. And we're giving these fans something to be proud about. And when they show up on Friday nights, and we got the speakers bumping. And we got the DJs <laughs> we did going. Do that. And we got the scoreboard going. It's a true Friday night right. hometown, right. you know, what it should be for and these we kids. And we had Georgia Sports, Georgia <laughs> Alabama we, I mean, Sports we had, Live. We had a we game, had game day. Day. We had a game and it was there. awesome. I mean, what Richard an environment and for these kids, and that's what it's about. You know, you want to give all these kids something they're never going to forget about 10. Because, you know, all these kids ain't going to play on Saturday. Right. And we know that. I right. mean, that ain't just Glenwood. That's, that, that's every high school right. in, in America. Right. But they're always going to remember them Friday nights and, and doing it with their brothers, doing it with their families. So that's the biggest thing for me. I told somebody last week before we even played the game on Wednesday, I said, man, I'm just so proud to be the head coach of all the improvements. And this thing is starting to look like a football program and act like a football program. Now, now, winning is a cherry on top, and that's what it, what it takes. Right. But I'm just so proud of that, the facility upgrade, and I think we're going to continue to grow. I right. really do. So talk about the excitement you expect in at Max Strong Stadium on the campus well, of Brookstone this know, Friday one night. One thing I know about our fans, they're going to travel. So they're going to be there. And, uh, you know, if you're indecisive, you may stay at home and say, oh, I'm going to watch it on ABC and all that. Come support these kids, please. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I'm begging you all right now, uh, put your DVR on when you go and watch it when you get home. That's right. And do all that the next day. Come support these kids because they deserve it. And I it's mean, the first time know, doing this, too, right. and but we, not know, just that. We, we out there yesterday at 3 o'clock, and it's hot, and I'm pushing them through a lot yesterday because we're sore, obviously, from a physical game on Friday. And then we're right back in the building this morning at 7 o'clock working, and, you know, we're practicing after school, and it's 103 out there today, and, you know, but we got to work. That's the only thing I know to do is we got to go back to work, and, you know, football's a funny sport. It's a humbling sport, and if you ain't ready every single time you tee up on Friday, you're going to take one of them out. And so, you know what I liked Friday night was? Did, did we see anybody on our side really give out or cramp up? We had like two guys cramp. And I, was and I didn't see it, but I saw it a lot but, on the but, other side. But what a, I guess, 360 from this time last year. So, you know, me being a new coach last year, you get in the building, 
and you tell them this, and you tell them, you tell them what's about to happen. You're playing on turf. It's 95 degrees, but they really don't know if they trust me yet. They really don't <laughs> know if I know what I'm talking That's about true. yet because I'm a new guy. They want to believe it, but they don't. Right. And then it happens. I mean, you know what talking about. That's right. So this year is a complete 360 because we've been there. We've been through some struggles. We know what to expect, and them guys knew. Last year, you know, you played 55 plays in a game. Well, we were tapped. Right. So we knew we had to get our body ready to go out there and play a physical game in the same way this week. And that's one of the things, biggest things for me is it's all about preparation. But, you know, we're giving our feet and our kids hydration. So it's going to be absolutely blistering hot Friday. I mean, the, the high, heat tells yeah. you that. Yeah. So, you know, we got to prepare not only, you know, from a from a mental standpoint, a physical standpoint, but we got to take care of our bodies throughout the week and uh, give ourselves a chance to be successful. Because I really believe, you know, we got six or nine players, and I believe in depth. I believe in playing a lot of kids, and that's how you win in the heat. Well, not just that. That's how you get kids to keep coming out. By, they, if they give some effort, they'll get a chance. That's to correct. That's correct. All right, Coach. Uh, any closing comments you got? You want to talk about uh, the, just, this game or the next game? Well, just again come out and support the kids and uh, you know Dustin we talked about this last year because we were kind of on the other side of 0-1 and 0-2 against these two guys so and I told you last week if we're 2-0 and 0-2 1-1 these games matter right and they do but yeah. then again next week starts everything and uh, so we're just we are really trying to use last week and this week as a semi-final going to a state championship yeah. mentality so we won a big game but guess what? We got another big game a week later, so how are we going to respond? And if you look back to last year, you know, I wasn't very happy with the way we came out in the state championship game. You know, we played really, really good ball in the semifinals. And then we come out in the state championship game and home blow. Took us a while. Yeah, we get down 21 nothing. So, for me, that's the one thing I, I told the coaches when we met Sunday at 2 o'clock, the first thing I said, We've got to treat this like we're going. We just played this the semifinal game. We're going to a state championship game because that's what you're doing. You're playing two very, very good opponents, two highly caliber programs, and so we're trying to take that next step and just, you know, hopefully we get in this situation again later down the road in November, and uh, we're prepared for it a little bit better than we were last year. Coach, we started off good. I'm excited about this yep. week. I really am. I'm excited one. about this week. I'm excited about the stadium being full. Uh, you're watching us, Georgia Alabama Sports Live. You're watching us on uh, Glenwood Facebook page. Coach Ryan Nelson, good luck this week. Thank you. Great show. The three guys were great today. Did awesome. Did awesome. And uh, I know that uh, I want to thank Thrift and Richard for uh, carrying us and being here tonight. We'd like to thank Mike and Ed's Barbecue again. Yep. And uh, to everybody out there, all the Glenwood Gator fans, please come out and support these guys Friday night. It's like Coach said, you can always record it, watch it later. Y'all watch it in slow motion slow motion, whatever you want to do, but come out and support these guys. Be a part of the first time the inaugural State Line Showdown. It'll be the Brookstone Cougars and your own Glenwood Gators. Till next time, I'm Dusty Purdue with Coach Ryan Nelson. So long, everybody, and go Gators. Go Gators. Awesome. Great job. He wants you to. Yeah, I'm going to order my food. Give me that green one. Because you see it. Awesome. Good job, Richard. Thank you. Hey, Carla. Appreciate hey, it, Coach Purdue. Great interview How are you? by Coach Purdue oh, and Coach Ryan Nelson. Hey, got Week two I'm of the Jumbo Glenwood Gators here. Coaching I mean, Show. Chop, chop, Jumbo chop. How is everybody doing? I am Richard Holdridge for Georgia Jumbo. Alabama Sports Live. We are live here at Mike uh, and Ed's Barbecue in Phoenix City. Fries and yes, and if you are watching us on Georgia Alabama Sports Live, you're getting a bonus coverage of me and I'm going to be interviewing Coach Nelson in just a bit. But I want to talk about the game what, against the Santa Pacelli Vikings. Border Wars. Being from Columbus, I know how big Pacelli is. A big One of the best private schools in Columbus. GIAA champions from last year. Taking on the Glenwood Gators. The AISA runners up to Lee Scott Academy. But the Glenwood Gators get the victory at the Swamp by a score of 36-12. And Thrift Berenger and I had the privilege of calling the game on Georgia Alabama Sports Live. And in just a minute, I'm going to interview Coach Nelson. And we're going to look forward to Brookstone. Because we get a treat. This is going to be televised on WTVM, the ABC affiliate. And I'm excited about that. Just really a great week two lineup of just about as much high school you can get. Coach. Hey, Great Richard. having you back on the show. Yes, sir, Congratulations man. on the win Thank against you, Pacelli. Thank you. You're 1-0 on the season. 
I had the privilege of calling the game with Fred Berger. We were up in the booth. So let's talk about you get the ball first to start the first half. Well, first off, I hate to interrupt you. I just oh, yeah. want to tell you this, Richard. Thank you so much. You and three have so much y'all are doing for these kids. Oh, anytime. Uh, the coverage y'all, not just for Glenwood, but the Bay City, the Columbus area, the Phoenix City area, what y'all are doing for these kids is phenomenal, and they deserve it. And, uh, you know, it's just su such a big thing because of how hard these kids are working and everything. So I just personally want to tell you from a, from a high school athlete and from a former player 20-something years ago, thank you all for everything y'all are doing for these kids. Well, we definitely appreciate that, Coach, and we love doing it. Uh, we will be back at the Swamp. Right. And, and But it was a great, great game against Pacelli. Uh, I had fun. I know calling the game with Thrift, it was fun. And uh, let's talk about that first half because you got the ball to start the first half. Uh, Dallas Crow, it seems like coming back from his junior season as a starting quarterback, he had so much confidence running that offense with the RPO, with the speed on the outside, quarterback keeper, he could take it himself. But I, I cannot believe how impressed I am with your sophomore running back, Carter Judah. But you also have a, a good running back, Camden White, as well. I mean, that offense was clicking, firing on all cylinders. You take the early 7-0 lead, you get the ball back, and then you're up by two scores against Pacelli. And really, your team played very well on both sides of the foot. Right. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, you talk about Dallas, and we talked about this last week. Year two in the system. You know, before I got here, he was in the system for a year with Coach Gibson, and then me transitioned in. Uh, year one with me. Now he's in year two, so it, it's not the unknown for him. Ben knows what to expect, knows what to do, and stuff like that. So that's big for him, you know, from an experience standpoint. And then, you know, the biggest thing, too, is we talk about this all the time as a staff and as a program is, you know, we go down and score, then we get a stop and we go down and score again. That's huge. And uh, so, you know, we, we want to get out up front. We talked about it last week. It's, it's, it's trying to make those guys play from behind because their offense ain't really built like that. They're kind of more of a methodic ground and pound type offense. And, uh, you know, when they get leads, it's very difficult to beat them because they can sit there and eat the clock and stuff like that. So that was kind of our plan going in. We want to get out and try to run early. And, uh, you know, we got the ball first. And, you know, we, we had some un unfortunate penalties early, but we overcame them. But we got the ball in. And that was the most important thing. I think it was a kind of a relief for our kids, too. We scored a ball in the open possession. Now everybody can kind of relax and breathe a little bit uh, because there is a lot of anxiety when you play that first ball game, a lot of unknowns and things like that. So, uh, But just uh, I can't credit our kids enough from just preparing all week and being ready to play and, uh, you know, going out there and execute what we're trying to do on both sides of the ball. I love seeing that matchup between Mason McCrane and the DB for Pacelli, AZ Justy. Both being basketball players, they're 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and they, just their height right. and their skill going up there. Unfortunately, AZ Justy did get uh, ejected from the game with two unsportsmanlike penalties, so we didn't get to see that matchup in the second half. Right. Uh, do you think that without Pacelli's best defender that that helped move the offense a little bit more in the second half? Well, you know, first off, I want to credit, uh, is it AZ? Is it uh, AZ? Number 12, yeah. yeah. He's a phenomenal player. And uh, he was a phenomenal player last year for him against us, and he's a great football player. And it's unfortunate what happened. You know, I don't really know. I went over there on their sideline with the penalties, but it's unfortunate it happened because him and Mason really were having a good battle. But you know, when it talks about does it change the game, I don't. I ain't gonna sit here and say yes or no because you know we threw the ball 11 times, and uh, we were able to physically just run the ball right at them. And uh, so you know that they were having some trouble with our pace and stuff like that. So um, I credit, give a lot of credit to our you know offensive line, you know, and Carter and uh, Camden and, and Dallas, and uh, just been able to be physical enough and run the football. So, uh, but you know, for them, I'm sure they felt like it did change the game a little bit because I know he's a good player on offense for them also. Coach, I want to talk about your defense because it seemed on the broadcast that you had a special player that seemed like he was on in every tackle. Lamont Bryant, number four. Yes. I mean, I, I heard you and Coach Purdue talk about how he had, what, 15 tackles? I mean, he really made an impact on defense. Uh, right. Tell us a little bit well, about him. Well, you know, Lamont's been a good player for a long time for us. And uh, he was a really great player last year. He's a younger brother of uh, Aaron Burton, who was a, a, a great player for us also last year. And, you know, Lamont's committed to Air Force. And uh, Lamont's got several offers still on the table. And, um, you know, but he's, you know, firmly committed to Air Force and stuff like that. But Monop, uh, Lamont's a phenomenal football player. You know, last year, starting the season off, we kind of played him at outside backer. 
And, uh, you know, and that may be his position when he gets to the next level. But, you know, we moved him into inside backer last year of game three. And he was flourishing there for us. And, uh, you know, he's the type of guy that can really run. He really, you know, strikes and, and tackles really well. Uh, but Lamont's a, uh, Lamont's a very high character kid. And, uh, you know, he does a lot of good stuff off the field for us in the locker room. So just, you know, just very, very happy with the way he played. But, uh, you know, moving on to this week, we know he's got to, you know, get ready and we've got to play another good ball game for us this week. Right, you got a big game next week. In fact, it's going to be on ABC WTVM. It's Glenwood going to Max Strong Stadium to take on the Brookstone Cougars. Last time Brookstone played Glenwood in the Swamp, it was a very close game, 25-23. But Brookstone, it's their first game this season, and they have a very talented tight end, Chris Vickerson. They got a very good team that went to the semifinals in the GIAA and probably would have beaten Pacelli if Cam Ellis didn't put on the Superman cape and, and get that score on a fourth and 26. Right. But this is a huge game, and I know your fans travel. Max Strong Stadium this Friday night is going to be packed. And I, I know it's on WTVM, and we encourage all the Glenwood fans out there to record it, DVR it, do whatever. Come on out to Max Strong Stadium to support the Glenwood Gators and the Brookstone Cougars. This is just going to be an incredible matchup, Coach. I'm looking forward to it. Yep, we are too. And, uh, you know, it's still early in the week, so we're trying to prepare and figure some things out on both sides of the ball. And uh, we're expecting, you know, their best. And uh, the, like I told uh, Dusty earlier, they got some really good football players on both sides of the ball. So. I know Coach Gillespie, I have them ready, and uh, so we're looking for, you know, a good battle, and, you know, hopefully we can show up, and uh, we can play uh, play them, you know, in a really good game, and uh, hopefully it turns out and goes our way this year. Coach, I cannot wait. Week two, Glenwood at Brookstone. Thank you for taking the time after the Coach's Show to have a bonus edition of the Coach's Show here yes, on Georgia-Alabama Sports Live. I want to thank Coach Dusty Purdue for helping out as well, and uh, by the way, I just want to say this, Coach. Coach Purdue was absolutely phenomenal in our college or our <laughs> high school game day with Look, picks. When I and see when I saw it, and he's got all the max prep notes and he wants to act like Lee Corso. He was I, said, I said I said, listen, really I told my dad, this fits Dusty Purdue to a T. He, <laughs> he has got to get on the show with y'all again. Because that's what he loves to do. <laughs> oh, oh, I just got told by Mr. Chris Blackshear his picks were two and four, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are definitely going to tally up those picks on the next high school game day. I have to, I, you picked the right one, right? Uh, I know yeah, that. I right. <laughs> right, want to thank Coach Nelson. Don't forget, the next game that we are live streaming is at Kinnett Stadium. The Jordan Red Jackets are hosting the Columbus Blue Devils. And then on Friday, we have a double header as the Heritage Bowl Thrip Barringer DJ Jones is going to be broadcasting that at A.J. McClung Memorial Stadium. Myself and Rick Beach are going to be up in Harris County broadcasting Russell County in Harris County. So for Coach Nelson, Coach Purdue, I'm Richard Holder saying so long here on Georgia-Alabama Sports Live. We'll see you next week.